Joining me now, former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich, who's executive producer of the George Washington documentary, oh gosh, The First American, now available on Amazon Prime Video. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to see it on Amazon Prime. I've already watched it, but uh, Newt Gingrich, great to see you as always. Very special. Um, what did you make of that appearance today with Theresa May after that Sun article <laughs> that did have an audio component, so they did quote him, but apparently they didn't quote him fully on what he said about May. How did that well, go down? I think sometimes Trump spends a fair amount of time making up lost ground that he lost. Uh, and, you know, they are allies, they are friends. I suspect he was embarrassed that it came out the way it did. Uh, she has a, she's got a very weak government and a lot of trouble, and that certainly didn't help any. But I thought the press conference actually helped her. and. Uh, it was also the tone was about right, I think. It was, uh, you know, Trump has actually had a very good trip. And I think even the New York Times admitted in a shocking editorial <laughs> that he had accomplished a great deal of what Obama had tried to do with NATO but had failed to do. And I thought, you know, Trump must have gotten a lot done if even the New York Times had to say it. Uh, I think it's, it's like this. If someone comes to our country, a foreign <clears throat> leader, and criticizes our president or po our policies. We don't much like that in the United States. Right. And I think Donald Trump doesn't like that. When, when we had previous Mexican presidents doing that about our immigration, I know I hit him hard on the radio. Not, it, it doesn't feel right. So the, the, going given that interview to the Sun, well, oh, I agreed with it, it, it was a ridiculous mistake. It was a mistake. He said, look, he's had a very good trip. But he clarified he's done, it and he apologized, apparently. He's, done, he's done very good things overall. And he had a mistake. I mean, Trump is a little bit like a baseball player who strikes out but also hits a lot of home runs. And there's some balance in there. Uh, and I think that that's part of just his style and his nature. And he's still new to it. And he still is relatively new. It's a year and a half into this and still lots of successes. The criticism of the president, and I've got to play this for you. This was Tom Donilon, former national security advisor for Barack Obama, today on CNN. Let's watch. I would not have the summit. In terms of the one-on-one -on -one meeting, you, you, if you I were spent advising this president, you would tell him cancel it. I wouldn't have scheduled it in the first place. It wasn't well prepared. There are no goals. It wasn't coordinated with the allies. We don't have the kind of unity you'd like to have coming into something like this. There are no goals. How many how many summits did Barack Obama have that ended up being more like just parties that that kept the catering uh, office uh, you know well busy in the White House? That's ridiculous. Well, I, I think it, <clears throat> it's inappropriate to measure the comments of an Obama-era official as though they're real. I mean, these people represented a worldview of weakness. They represented a worldview of, quote, leading from the, from the rear. They represented a worldview. John Kerry's model of being Secretary of State was any four-star hotel with any five-star restaurant any time. Uh, and they then thought that was negotiating. Uh, I think that if you watch what Trump is achieving, for example, NATO members have now absolutely committed to get to the level of commitment that President Bush asked for, President Obama asked for, Trump got him to say yes. And there are a number of these things that are happening that I think represent a substantial gain, partly by force of his personality. And he's different from the usual. I mean, the people, <laughs> and I think a lot of it, Newt, is a lot of these smart people, the Council on Foreign Relations, Brookings Institution, all of these well-heeled think tanks, They've spent their lives dedicated to geopolitical understanding and foreign policy, written these long articles most people haven't read. And a lot of them were responsible for screwing up the post-Cold War era, as Pat Buchanan said on my radio show today. This guy comes along with, like, no experience. And he's like, this is ridiculous. Why are we paying so much of this burden? You guys aren't coughing up more money. And why shouldn't we have a better relationship with Putin? We're not going to agree on a lot, but we talked to China, and they certainly have a much bigger military and, in, in many ways, more aggressive, more of a threat. And they're like, oh, you can't say that. Why? Well, look, I, I think two things. First of all, Trump is probably the most unusual president since uh, Andrew Jackson uh, in that his personality, his style, his aggressiveness. Second, I think what drives the foreign policy establishment crazy is that their prestige, their role in the world, it's because they're really smart and they write really good papers. It's too complicated for the little people to understand. Right. Well, and, and Donald Trump comes in, he says, he explains it all. I says, well, we can actually do better. And he devalues all of them because he doesn't need them. So they're all <laughs> sitting around going, oh, my God, what if the new model became electing a president who didn't need us? That's why you see this frenzy 
on both the right and the left. Oh no, the right. The, the right is worse. The right. The, let's face it. These people on the right, and there's there are about this many, five. They're talking just to themselves, and maybe right. a few people on MSNBC, and that's a dwindling audience. God bless them. Um, today, these indictments were handed down. Very long indictments. Uh, Russian GRU officers, intelligence officers. Uh, what do you make of this? Are serious allegations hacking into American accounts? Placing uh, malware into American uh, prominent Democrat accounts like Podesta, the DNC, uh, fairly serious, very serious. Well, they're, they're very serious. They raise two questions in my mind. The first is, why is it that Mueller would decide to release this just before the president sees Putin? Uh, it's just it's an odd timing. Uh, I don't frankly care personally because I think it actually strengthens uh, Trump's hand to walk in and say to Putin, "You're telling me you guys didn't do that." We just indicted 12 of your people. But the second question I'd raise, which is a very interesting question, if we're going to start going after people, if we engage in hacking in the United States, there are going to be so many Chinese that we should be indicting that I, I think this is a very serious standard to start setting, probably the right standard. Uh, but it does mean we're going to go after other countries' nationals in their own homeland and indict them. Uh, that will be a big change. And, and Trump did say today he would confront Russia about the question of meddling. This was before the indictments were That's handed right. down. Let's watch. Will we be talking about meddling? And uh, I will absolutely bring that up. I don't think you'll have any, uh, gee, I did it, I did it, you got me. There won't be a Perry Mason here, I don't think. But you never know what happens, right? But I will absolutely, firmly ask the question. Well, they they're have a narrative that they can't get off. Trump's cozy to Putin and mean to our allies. This is just, it's a drumbeat you hear all day long, but sometimes with your friends, you have to have, you have, to have a, a real honest relationship. If they would listen to what Trump said, what President Trump said to, to Chancellor Merkel when he went right at her and said, don't accept the Russian pipeline for natural yeah, no, gas, Nord Stream two. buy our liquid natural gas instead, he's threatening Putin with billions of dollars of losses. Yeah, uh, and that was certainly not the act of somebody who is in Putin's favor. Well, and the more we are able to triangulate with Russia and China, that's also a good thing. I mean, we don't want to drive Russia into the arms of China. That would be a disastrous uh, right. a, a point for us. And Trump sees that. I mean, again, someone who has had no experience until running for president on all these issues, I think he continues to show up. So many of these people on their supposed expertise on matters that, you know, they are complicated, they are important. But Donald Trump said, it doesn't have to be this linear on all these things. Well, we can he, have better relationships well, with more countries. He also has a model in his own head that we live in an age when leaders can communicate directly with leaders. Right. It changes the whole nature of diplomacy. He does that with Kim Jong-un in North Korea. He does it with the president of China. He's yeah. doing it now with the president of Russia. I would, as Churchill once said, you know, jaw, jaw, jaw is better than war, war, war. I would much rather Talk. have them talking than have us drifting more and more towards a real conflict. And now we have Democrats saying we shouldn't talk. I mean, in the, in the 80s, they were like, all we should do is talk to the Soviet Union well, when we needed them. I have to ask you something, speaking of the 80s. They're making this big deal of the balloon. We're going to talk about it later with Raymond Arroyo, the big Trump balloon and the protests. Yeah, there are pro protests in London. Remember the protests against Reagan and against Bush. We have some of the video. Reagan in 82, Bush many times, London, Berlin, hundreds of thousands of people in Spain. That was 82 in Berlin for Reagan. We had fires. We had uh, huge mass protests. And yet we're, we're supposed to believe, oh, it's, it's only Donald Trump. We're the most hated we've ever been because of Donald Trump. You hear that all day long today. Well, listen, as you know, I spent a fair amount of time now in Rome. We recently was in Paris. Um, I don't think that we're hated. I think that people on the left react like people on the left. And, of course, a lot of the Reagan demonstrations were paid for by the Soviet by Union, the yep. <clears throat> which was actually subsidizing the peace movement, uh, something which liberals don't like to concede. But I think that, so somebody puts up a big balloon. Why should they, I mean, my first reaction is, this is the best they've got. This is their idea of an intellectual answer to Trump. Final, one, one more point, we're running late, but on the trade issue, he's getting slammed for these tariffs. One of the top most respected analysts on financial matters from Alliance, Alliance um, had a great quote. I think actually we can play it if, if you don't mind. Um, let's just listen to this because it blows away what everyone is saying about tariffs and whether Trump can win a trade war. Let's watch.
we are winning and we will win the, the trade war. And I think just look at the performance of U.S. markets relative to China and relative to others. I call it the Reagan moment for trade, that when people realize that at the end of the day, the U.S. will prevail because it's a less open economy, because it's a more dynamic economy. It's like they'll, they'll see Trump, this Trump approach to let's trade face, is let's working. Let's face reality. We're the largest market in the world. Everybody else needs access here more than we need access anywhere. Newt Gingrich, very Good special. To be with you. Very special. It's great to see you, as always. We'll see you. I got to get to Rome this summer. Please, I got to get there.